Yeah, Sam Levis going to be our starting quarterback. Uh, so he's, we talked to him, Jeff, uh, yesterday. So Sam's going to be the starter going into the season. And uh, you know, we're fired up. We believe we have a lot of quarterbacks on this team that can win football games. And uh, I feel like our quarterback depth is really good, to be honest. And I'm very confident with all three of our quarterbacks uh, right now uh, that have been getting reps with the ones, twos, and threes. How has Sam's growth since the spring from what you've seen? I mean, obviously getting used to the playbook and then now from an execution standpoint, made that decision for you. Yeah, the game slowed down a little bit. Now, obviously, it's going to speed back up when the live bullets come. Right, let's not kid ourselves. Right, There's going to be some year one things that you don't see that you can coach all you want until you see it, you don't see it. Uh, but the game's definitely slowed down for him. What are some of the attributes of Sam that leads you most to any help him win the job? Yeah, I mean, in 300 clips of team of team series scenarios, he has two interceptions. So you're talking 300 clips. That's roughly five football games, uh, and you have two interceptions. Uh, that's pretty good. And that's not, talk about taking care of the football. That's at a, that's at a high level. Uh, on top of that, he cares, his work ethic, he's mobile enough, he's got a lot of traits uh, to where I think he's a, a really, really, really good football player. And uh, combine that with not turning the ball over, you know, up to this point at camp in team series settings, uh, that's what's helped us make that season. He's taken a ton of QB1 reps, you know, how has his mentality been, kind of the guy with the target on his back, right? trying to Yeah, I mean, He's the same person every day. He's pretty consistent. He's a competitor. Uh, so, to be honest, he's kind of been the same person every day. You know, and, and I'll give all three of our guys credit. Trenton, Jeff, and him, they've kind of been the same demeanor, the same mindset every single day, which is why I feel really good about our quarterback room, is it's not every day is a new day. It's I know what I'm getting out of those guys when they show up in the building. And anytime you know what you're getting with guys, and I think we have weapons to surround themselves, surround our quarterbacks with this year, you can create a plan to put those guys in their best skill set. And I think we have enough talent around our quarterback this year to where uh, we can protect them and we can build a plan around all three of them uh, if needed to be successful. When did you know he was kind of like I mean, a day ago, but I mean, I knew after the first, when you don't turn it over consistently, it starts to show up. He didn't make the same mistake twice. So it was more like, can you keep this up? Or is there a drop off? Okay, you had one bad day in there when you threw both of your interceptions. Can you respond to it? He did. I ripped his butt. Can you respond to it? He did. Uh, so it was just a body of work. For, for me, such a young quarterback, it's nothing on a given how he handled uh, this, the whole situation. Just coming out of spring practice. He was pretty much, you know, in the lead and he didn't never rest in his morals. That's something that, you know, a lot of young quarterbacks maybe fall into that trap. Yeah, the one thing that will never happen here is promises. Mm -hmm. Anybody who says they were promised something here, it wasn't from me. I can guarantee you that. And if it was from somebody on our staff, like, they're going to have to answer to me because we don't make promises here. We give you opportunities. And uh, we told Sam coming in here in the spring, you're going to have an opportunity to win this job. And he did a nice job. Right? We need another quarterback, so we're going to bring in another quarterback. Right? In the spring, there were other highly ranked quarterbacks that, that wanted to be here. But I promised them that I was only going to take one. So I was true to my word. Right? Somebody leaves after the spring, and it's okay, we need another one. I have to bring one in. I'm going to bring in the best guy to compete with. Right? He said, let's go. And I think same thing with bringing somebody in, bringing Jeff into the same thought process. So uh, it's always about competition and making the guy next to you better. Because if you get pushed by the guy next to you and he pushes you, we talk about it's a lot easier to climb the ladder with people helping you than to push people down, right? A lot easier if you climb the ladder with somebody. So help each other be the best version of yourself. Has it been determined who the backup would be or what would be the situation? Yeah, I mean, right now it would be Jeff. Uh, but uh, obviously as, as things continue, that could change. I have a lot of trust in Trenton. Trenton started a lot of games. He's, 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 won, a lot, he's won games here. Uh, he's a guy I trust. Uh, Trenton's was voted on the leadership council here for a reason. Uh, it's because guys trust him, guys believe in him. He's back there grabbing Sam after plays, like, hey, low red zone, you got to throw that that little that little bang out a little bit faster. You got to throw it in the first window. You got to be ready. Don't throw it when it's open. You got to see it open. He's back there coaching, and uh, to have a guy like Trenton on this football team still, who he just embodies ASU football. 
uh, embodies everything that's good about the sport of football. And, uh, and we're blessed to have him still a part of the football team. How nice is it just to know who your quarterback is, the team knows, everyone can move forward knowing who the main guy is? I mean, it really doesn't matter to me. I mean, it's, uh, I think that's most positions. It's, it's a position on the field. It's an important one. I mean, it's the one that makes everything go. It's the one that your season could be, you could be a four win team or a 10 win team based off the quarterback. Uh, and I think the school down south was living testament of that last year. You know, they had a change and, and Noah came in and he's a hell of a player. And it completely, that one player completely changed the entire trajectory of that season. So I think that position is vital, but it's not, uh, it's you're gonna play the best players. And I, I don't get too much into the, uh, whose feelings get hurt, like, so that's part of life. Is it a decision on which uh, two freshmen are gonna redshirt or not? Does the NIL transfer portal really come into consideration? Because obviously, a guy like Sam Levin was an attractive transfer because he did redshirt last year. Um, how these conversations, you know? Uh, what you just described, no, that side of it. Like, we're not gonna burn somebody's red shirt so they're a less attractive transfer if they leave, no. Uh, if somebody can help us win football games, we're gonna play them. Uh, hopefully we can red shirt them if they're not helping us a certain number of plays. But I definitely think the way college athletics is going with revenue sharing and NIL in this direction, I think kids are gonna actually play longer in their careers than they ever have because they can make money doing it. So I think red shirts and keeping red shirts and then creating a culture so your red shirt senior will say, do I want to go be an undrafted free agent or do I want to come back for my fifth year and make money here now? I think you have to play that as a part as more kids are going to want to stay for that extra year now probably than they had seven years ago uh, when there was no money being passed out to the players. So you think revenue sharing may dull transfer uh, elements of the I, I wouldn't talk. I don't know about the transfer element. It will. I think it will entice players to return to college at a higher rate. And I think you can already see that in NIL with quarterback play. I mean, most of those quarterbacks that were in the draft last year, uh, probably not returning to college football if NIL wasn't a play for those people that were draft eligible. So I think that when revenue share starts is going to be more common amongst sixth fifth, seventh rounders, undrafted free agents that still have a year to go, may be able to convince them to come back because they can make some money and they still have an extra year. And they'd only have that year if, you know, coach was smart with them with a red shirt. Sam mentioned at Kent too that uh, when he first got here, his leadership style may have been a little abrasive, but he worked with him over the summer and obviously getting voted to the leadership council is a testament to that. Where have you seen his biggest strides uh, off the field as a leader? Yeah, he doesn't just yell at people anymore. <laughs> And uh, it's funny because Bo was so similar, right? When, when you're a perfectionist and you want everything to be right and you care at such a high level, it's really hard for you to process. That person just may not care quite as much. They may still really care, but they may not have this obsessiveness where practice ends and I watch it immediately because I can't function if I don't. And you've got to be able to say, okay, how do I get the best out of this guy? Well, jog down the field. Say, hey, flatten that out for me. Don't yell. Flatten that out. What are you doing? Right? Yeah, everybody knows you're smart. Great. But everybody got to hate you. Now, he's really embraced that model of, like, channel that passion and energy, right? And do it in one-on-one -on -one settings with certain guys. And then people are going to feel your passion and energy. That's going to happen naturally. Uh, but really try to channel that and kind of try to lead a little bit people, different people, different Lead people differently based off of the person. Thank you.